Step into the world of a classic TV series from back in the day. It's all about the Six Million Dollar Man. You might have heard about it before. It's got Lee Majors in the lead role, playing a guy named Steve Austin. After a really bad accident, he gets turned into a bionic man with superpowers. He fights bad guys and saves people with his super strength and speed. But wait, there's more to this show than meets the eye. There are some funny, surprising, and even sad facts about it that you might not know. So, if you're up for it, stick around and find out more about this blast from the past. In the 1970s, a TV series called The Six Million Dollar Man captured people's attention. It told the story of Steve Austin, a guy who becomes part machine after a bad accident. This show wasn't just about entertainment, it made a big mark on our culture. Steve Austin, with his new bionic abilities, took on missions for the government. The show became so popular that it led to toys, comics, and even another series. But the impact wasn't just in the fictional world. It got people thinking about blending humans with technology in real life. The show's message about overcoming challenges with the help of technology is still with us today. It sparked our interest in what could happen if we mix humans and advanced tech. The Six Million Dollar Man is a reminder of how we're always trying to see how far we can go. PBS Children's show The Electric Company created skits inspired by the series titled The Six Dollar and Thirty Nine Cent Man. Actress Trisha Helfer portrayed Farrah Fawcett in the television movie Behind the Camera, the unauthorized story of Charlie's Angels. John Delancey, who has appeared in both Doctor Who and Star Trek, also played a doctor in three episodes of Emergency and in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. He co-hosts Star Trek The Music with fellow actor Robert Picaro, known for his role as the doctor on Star Trek Voyager. In the world of TV shows, there was a series that grabbed people's attention for its futuristic ideas and thrilling adventures. It followed the story of a guy who used to be in the Air Force and worked for NASA. Then, he had a terrible accident, but instead of giving up, he underwent some groundbreaking surgeries that turned him into a sort of superhero. Throughout the series, he went on daring missions, showing off his amazing new abilities. Some familiar faces, like John DeLancey from Star Trek, made appearances, adding to the excitement. The show was popular and left a mark on TV history, inspiring other sci-fi and action shows. It's still loved by fans around the world today. In the world of entertainment, there are many interesting stories that show its different sides. For example, there's a tale about an actor named John DeLancey who cared a lot about saving an old theater. He joined a campaign in 1989 to help protect it because he valued history. Then there's a story about a man named Martin Caden who had an idea about who should play a famous TV character. He thought someone else should get the role, but in the end, another actor, Lee Majors, got it instead. Finally, there's a story about Martha Scott, who was a respected member of an awards group. But in 2004, she didn't get recognized for her work at an important awards ceremony. This made people talk about how awards are given out in the movie industry. These stories show that Hollywood has many different sides with ups and downs, and not everything is always straightforward. In a well-known movie, Martha Scott played John Carradine's mother. Surprisingly, she was six years younger than him, which might shock fans. Despite this age difference, their chemistry on screen was strong, making their roles more believable and enhancing the story. Two characters, Steve Austin and Jamie Somers, are famous for their roles in a popular sci-fi show. They've become legendary in TV history, captivating audiences worldwide. In fact, TV Guide ranked them as the 19th greatest sci-fi duo ever. Throughout the show, Oscar hardly disagrees with Steve's plans. This shows their close friendship and respect for each other. Oscar's constant support for Steve highlights their bond and makes their interactions more interesting to watch. In summary, Martha Scott's surprising age compared to John Carradine, the lasting fame of Steve Austin and Jamie Somers, and the strong friendship between Steve and Oscar are all important parts of the Six Million Dollar Man series, showing how it's left its mark on popular culture. In many Spanish-speaking countries, a popular TV series from 1974 underwent a name change for its audience. The series is well known for its unique opening scene involving a plane crash. However, what's not widely known is that the actual crash was caused by a rescue helicopter entering the test flight airspace. The pilot's quick action to avoid a collision resulted in the crash that became a hallmark of the show's introduction. One of the actors in the series had an impressive career. She appeared in six movies nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars, including titles like Our Town, One Foot in Heaven, The Ten Commandments, Sayonara, Ben-Hur, and The Turning Point. Notably, Ben-Hur was the only winner among these nominations. 
These behind the scenes facts shed light on the unique aspects of the show and the unintended real world consequences of its famous opening sequence. Such details offer insight into the complex and unpredictable nature of television production, bridging the scripted world with reality. In the 1974 TV series, the United States lead actor, who moved to England after World War II, played a significant role. He trained at RAHDA in 1947 and became the first American member of the Old Vic. With appearances in British pictures and a presence on radio and TV, he later returned to the United States. Meanwhile, the then wife of the main character played three different roles in the show, including one for which the lead actor advocated but ultimately lost out. Another notable mention is John DeLancey, whose first glimpse of his iconic role as Q came in a 1978 episode with William Shatner, known for his portrayal of Captain James T. Kirk in the original Star Trek series and subsequent films. Martin Caden drew inspiration from astronauts David Scott and Eugene Cernan when creating the character of Steve Austin. In the spring of 1977, production of the show's final season faced a halt as Lee Majors demanded contract negotiations. Amidst talks of finding a replacement, actors such as Gil Gerard, Bruce Jenner, and Harrison Ford were considered. Additionally, the bionic watermelon skit on the Captain and Tennell variety show humorously depicted the show's theme of rebuilding and enhancing abilities after an accident, likening it to a watermelon's transformation after falling off a fruit truck. In the series, Austin frequently inquired about others' clearance levels before deploying his bionics, often humorously suggesting level six, a nod to his status as the six million dollar man. Lindsay Wagner, who portrayed the bionic woman, insisted on her character marrying the protagonist in the 1994 TV movie Bionic Ever After. Fans had awaited this union for almost two decades. The producers agreed to her condition, and the film concluded with a wedding. Notably, Martha Scott collaborated with Robert Ryan and Henry Fonda in 1968 to establish Plumstead Playhouse, later renamed Plumstead Theatre Society. They co-produced the Broadway play First Monday in October and its movie adaptation in 1981. Additionally, Scott produced a Los Angeles production of Twelve Angry Men in 1985. In the mid-1970s, a groundbreaking TV series emerged alongside its spin-off, The Bionic Woman. This series marked a pivotal moment for network television, demonstrating that the superhero fantasy genre could thrive as primetime entertainment. It shifted the perception of such content from campy parody to serious drama. As a result, Hollywood began producing more superhero series and gave credibility to projects like the Salkine family's Superman feature film. The impact of the series even extended to popular culture, as seen in its spoofing by Mad Magazine as the Six Million Dollars Man. Behind the scenes, there were interesting connections among the cast and crew. Alan Oppenheimer, a key figure in the series, shared a connection with future collaborator Lou Scheimer from their days at Carnegie Tech. Despite being in different departments, they eventually crossed paths while working at Filmation. These insights shed light on the significance and influence of the series, both in the entertainment industry and in popular culture. In the early days, a famous TV series featured Lindsay Wagner as a guest star in the first episode of another show, The Rockford Files. This collaboration was a big deal in TV history. As the Six Million Dollar Man became more popular, something unexpected happened. Some young fans tried to hurt themselves to get bionic parts like the hero on TV. Producers and Lee Majors, the main actor, wrote a letter to at least one child to tell them that the show was just pretend and not to copy dangerous things. In a surprising turn of events, Stephanie Powers, known for her role in Heart to Heart, once went into a Mexican bullring using the name La Picasa. This adventure showed a different side of the actress outside of her usual acting. These stories tell us interesting things about the show and how it affected both the people who watched it and the people who made it happen. William Sylvester, known for his guest roles in 1970s American television after returning from England, played a significant role in The Gemini Man and had a recurring part in Quincy, M.E. during that period. During the filming of the first season, Lee Majors, one of the primary leads, was reportedly approachable. However, as the popularity of the series grew, Majors became more withdrawn, preferring the company of his own circle of friends on the set. In the episode titled The Bionic Christmas Carol, Steve, played by Majors, visits a toy store. Interestingly, a six million dollar man action figure is visible on the shelf behind the counter. These insights provide a glimpse into the dynamics on and off the set of the 1974 TV series, shedding light on the experiences of key cast members and intriguing details within specific episodes.
Martha Scott played important roles alongside Charlton Heston in two well-known movies, acting as his mother in Ben-Hur and The Ten Commandments. She also portrayed his wife in various stage performances, showcasing her talent in both film and theater. Virginia Gregg made a name for herself in radio acting, appearing in popular shows like Dragnet and The Lone Ranger. She skillfully took on different female roles, and her voice became well known for its depth and emotion in the radio world. William Sylvester found his niche in horror films, starring in three movies with the word devil in the title, such as Devil Doll, Devils of Darkness, and The Devil Inside. His chilling performances as characters haunted by the supernatural left a lasting impact on audiences, securing his place in cinematic history. These three individuals made significant contributions to their respective fields, leaving a lasting legacy. In the world of classic television, there were some memorable faces that appeared in a show about a bionic man. One actor, known for playing Q in Star Trek, also showed up in this series. Another actress, famous for her role in Charlie's Angels, also had a part in it. Plus, there was a voice actor from the Psycho films who lent her talents to the show. Together, they made the cast diverse and brought their own unique skills to the screen. From the mysterious presence of one actor to the charm of the actress and the haunting voice of the voice actor, they all left their mark on viewers around the world. Their work helped make the show a classic in TV history. In the world of entertainment, Henry Jones made a notable shift from stage to screen in 1961, marking a significant moment in his career. After finding success on Broadway, he brought his charm and acting skills to television and movies. In one memorable scene, Monty Markham played a character called the Seven Million Dollar Man in a big fight with the famous Lee Majors. Markham's character, originally named Barney Miller, went through a name change to Barney Hiller to avoid confusion with a similar TV comedy. The series gained popularity worldwide, especially in France, where it was titled El Homme Qui Valley Three Milliards or The Man Who Is Worth Three Billion. This adaptation added to its international appeal. The Six Million Dollar Man wasn't just a gripping story. It also reached people from different cultures and languages, captivating audiences everywhere. The characters became part of people's imaginations, staying relevant even as time passed. In summary, Henry Jones's move to TV and film and Monty Markham's portrayal of Barney Hiller helped make the series memorable and widely loved. Martha Scott, who portrayed Olive Deering's mother in a well-known film, was just six years older than her co-star in real life. The franchise introduced two characters known as Bionic Boys. Vince Van Patten portrayed Andy Sheffield, a character who, after a tragic accident, regains mobility through bionics. Another character, Michael Austin, appears in a later TV movie, where he, Steve's illegitimate son, becomes more powerful than his bionic father after receiving bionics himself. Farrah Fawcett, along with her Charlie's Angels co-stars, considered an offer from Time magazine to be on their cover of prestigious honor. However, a disagreement arose regarding giving up personal time for the shoot leading to a memorable lunchtime standoff with the producers. Eventually, the trio agreed to pose for the magazine in the last minutes of their lunch hour, creating a cherished memory among friends. In its early years, the Six Million Dollar Man featured Farrah Fawcett, who gained initial recognition as a contestant on the dating game. Alan Oppenheimer portrayed Dr. Rudy Wells during the show's first and second seasons before Martin E. Brooks took over the role for the remainder of the series. Oppenheimer returned for a single episode in Season 3, where flashbacks necessitated his presence alongside Brooks. Additionally, John DeLancey notably used the term Trek in Star Trek The Next Generation, while James Cromwell became the sole actor to mention Star Trek in Star Trek First Contact. Before Lee Majors took on the role of Steve Austin, Monty Markham was the producer's first choice for The Six Million Dollar Man. Interestingly, Markham later portrayed the Seven Million Dollar Man in a second season episode titled The Seven Million Dollar Man, where he played Barney Miller. The creator of the Six Million Dollar Man, Martin Caden, resided in Cocoa Beach. He crafted the character Steve Austin based on his novel Cyborg. Caden borrowed the name Dr. Rudy Wells from a real physician in Cocoa Beach who was known for his quirky habit of wearing roller skates in his office. In a nod to his connection to the area, Caden's ashes were scattered over the Cocoa Beach coastline in 1997. Lee Majors, the iconic actor who portrayed Steve Austin, shared friendships with notable figures like Robert Fuller, Randolph Mantooth, Linda Evans, James Brawlin, Peter Breck, and Richard Anderson. The opening sequence of the series begins with a rocket launch, suggesting that the protagonist accident occurred while he was flying to the moon. 
However, in reality, his accident happened during a routine shuttle flight demonstration for the ground crew, and he never left Earth's orbit. The dramatic dialogue in the opening sequence, such as she's breaking up, and we can rebuild him, was added later and does not appear in any episode. Oscar Goldman, a prominent character, was not even seen in the original pilot. Contrary to popular belief, Fembots were not introduced in The Six Million Dollar Man. They first appeared on television in The Magician, The Illusion of the Stainless Steel Lady, starring Bill Bixby. Although static in that series, the reveal of the Steel Lady was quite shocking for its time. The concept of Fembots was pioneered by Westworld. However, The Six Million Dollar Man franchise depicted Fembots as more humanized and true moving robots similar to those seen in the movie. Ellen Oppenheimer, a cast member, received the 1990 Drama Log Award for Outstanding Performance for his role in The American Dream at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. In the later stages of the series, he experimented with changing his appearance, sporting a mustache. However, this didn't sit well with viewers, leading to its abandonment. Interestingly, around the same time, he underwent a rhinoplasty and altered his hairstyle to conceal the procedure. Her journey into acting was rather unexpected. She had been a regular babysitter for a star's children when he encouraged her to join his acting classes, eventually shaping her career in the field. John DeLancey, along with Leonard Nimoy and writer-producer Nat Segaloff, founded Alien Voices in 1996. The group specializes in producing audio adaptations of classic science fiction and fantasy tales, including The Time Machine and The Lost World. Daughter of Marilyn Ball, a retired building contractor, and production consultant on her daughter's shows, Lindsay Wagner starred in Police Story Burnout and The Taking of Flight 847, The Uli Derrickson Story. Producer Harv Bennett provided the opening voiceover, Steve Austin, A Man Barely Alive, in the series. Bennett recorded this edition when Richard Anderson, who voiced the rest of the monologue, was unavailable. The aircraft crashing in the show's opening was an M2F2, a lifting body configuration built by Northrop. The audio effects were from a crash at Edwards Air Force Base in California in 1967. Test pilot Bruce Peterson, who survived the crash, lost use of his right eye due to an infection, ending his flying career. Peterson expressed his discomfort with the show, reliving his accident weekly. Colonel Steve Austin, employed by the Office of Scientific Investigation, originates from a lineage dating back to Ivan Torres' The Magnetic Monster series, where the men investigate perilous scientific innovations. In The Six Million Dollar Man, Alan Oppenheimer assumed the role of Dr. Rudy Wells following Martin Balsam's portrayal in the pilot TV movie. Later, Martin E. Brooks succeeded Oppenheimer, collaborating with him in the execution. John DeLancey, known for his portrayal of Q in Star Trek The Next Generation, appeared in three live-action Star Trek series alongside Jonathan Frakes, Marina Cities, Armin Scheimerman, Michael Ansara, Richard Poe, and Mark Allen Shepard, showcasing his versatility across the franchise. The exterior shots of OSI headquarters were filmed at the Russell Senate office, building in Washington, D.C. Lindsay Wagner first appeared alongside Lee Majors in his series Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law in 1971. She later gained fame as the Bionic Woman, a role she initially played on The Six Million Dollar Man, where Major starred as the title character. Martha Scott, despite playing Charlton Heston's mother in iconic films like The Ten Commandments, and Ben Hurd, who was only 11 years his senior in real life. So, the connection between these actors and their roles adds depth to the show's dynamic. In an episode called Mr. Monk Stays in Bed, a guy named John Delancey shows up, adding depth to the story and showing how versatile the show's casting can be. Martha Scott, known for her role in design for a stained glass window, showed off her acting skills in the famous movie Ben-Hur. Charlton Heston suggested her for the part after the original actress got replaced. Heston believed in Scott's abilities, and he was right. She fit into her roles really well every time. People still wonder about the cool bionic sound effects from the show. Some say they recorded metal rulers flipping or messed with metal rebar to make them. Harv Bennett mentioned someone named Jim Troutman in connection to these effects, but no one knows for sure. The sound effects for the Bigfoot episodes also get people talking. Some think they changed up the bionic effects or played around with pipe organ sounds. The Six Million Dollar Man keeps its place in TV history because of its memorable characters and new ways of telling stories. Its influence can still be felt in entertainment today. The opening sequence of the show has been paid homage to in two television commercials, one by Coors Light in the mid-1990s and another by the 2012 Mazda CX-5 crossover utility vehicle. 
Lindsay Wagner, a contract player for Universal Studios earning $1,000 per week, guest starred as Jamie Somers on the show. Her character died at the end of a two-part episode, leading to Universal not renewing her contract. However, due to public outcry, Jamie Somers was resurrected. Wagner negotiated a significant salary increase for another two-part episode, leading to her own series where she commanded a higher salary. Martha Scott, cast in the Broadway role of Emily Webb, achieved theater stardom. Ironically, when the role was taken to film, the ending was rewritten to include a happier outcome. This misjudgment affected the film's status despite its other merits. In a memorable moment from a 1980 movie, Stephanie Powers wore a stunning red sequin dress. Later, Dustin Hoffman sported the same dress in the 1982 classic Tootsie. Oscar often showed surprise by quickly taking off his glasses in different episodes. The phone number 555-2368 appeared often in close-up shots of phones, which keen-eyed viewers might have noticed in the Bionic Woman series too. These little hints and details make the stories more interesting for audiences. They show how much effort and creativity the creators put into their work. This makes their movies and shows stand out in entertainment history. In the series, characters Oscar Goldman and Rudy Wells appeared in both The Six Million Dollar Man and its spin-off, The Bionic Woman. This was unique for the time, as the same characters crossed over to two different networks concurrently. Stephanie Powers, known for her role in the show, shared a ballet class with Natalie Wood and Jill St. John, who all had connections to Robert Wagner. Throughout the series, the lead character, Steve, frequently used phrases like you bet or you got it in almost every episode. It's a defining trait of the character's dialogue. In the show, they sometimes reuse scenes. In the first episode, Darren McGavin tells his team that the project costs six million dollars. Ryan O'Neill and Farrah Fawcett got back together in 2001 and stayed together until she passed away. The show used cool effects and exciting action scenes. Even though they reused some scenes, the show stayed exciting and kept viewers interested. It's still popular today and inspires new fans. In seven seasons, John Delancey made eight appearances on Star Trek The Next Generation. Additionally, he co-created and co-hosts Star Trek The Music, a concert presentation with narration, alongside Robert Picaro, who portrayed the Doctor on Star Trek Voyager. Darren McGavin and Martin Balsam appeared in the pilot episode, but did not reappear afterward. In 1980, during the opening night of Butterflies Are Free at the Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater, Farrah Fawcett encountered an unusual incident. A disruptive obese woman in the front row hurled insults and made bird calls, eventually flashing the performers, including co-star Dennis Christopher, who ironically portrayed a blind character. Despite the chaotic scene, Farrah's performance earned positive reviews. William Sylvester, initially considered for the lead role in the 1956 TV series The Buccaneers, lost out to Robert Shaw. In the early season, Steve, the protagonist, often explained his bionic eye ability by claiming he eats a lot of carrots. The Six Million Dollar Man explores interesting anecdotes and behind-the-scenes moments revealing the challenges and unique experiences of the cast and crew. In the realm of television history, fascinating connections often emerge between beloved actors and iconic shows. One such instance involves a remarkable friendship between two prominent figures from different TV series. Known for his role in the 1974 TV series, John DeLancey forged a close bond with another television star. Together, they graced the screens of MacGyver, Stargate SG-1, and Legend. Interestingly, the television landscape intertwines further with connections to the renowned Six Million Dollar Man series. Several actors from the original Star Trek series found themselves involved in this iconic show. William Shatner, George Teke, Gary Lockwood, and Roger Perry all made appearances, enriching the narrative with their talents. Moreover, the episode Rescue of Athena 1 featured a storyline that paid homage to space as the final frontier, penned by the skilled writer DC Fontana. Additionally, Harv Bennett, later recognized for producing Star Trek movies, played a significant role in The Six Million Dollar Man. Notably, the series also celebrates the achievements of Martha Scott, who received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for live theater in 1993, adding to the rich tapestry of connections within the entertainment industry. In her Emmy Award acceptance speech as Best Actress for her role in the show, Lindsay Wagner expressed gratitude towards her then-husband Michael Brandon and guest star Linda Weiser, acknowledging their warmth and support. In a television interview, Lee Majors, who portrayed the character Steve Austin, highlighted the dual nature of Austin's abilities. Despite being super fast, super strong, and possessing 2040 eyesight, Austin faced challenges. His bionics could malfunction, 
and he grappled with human weaknesses. When the series aired in Israel, it adopted the title The Man Who Is Worth Millions. This name change stemmed from the cultural association of the number six million with the Holocaust in Israel. The show delves into the complexities of Steve Austin's character, showcasing a blend of extraordinary abilities and human vulnerabilities. Lindsay Wagner's acknowledgement of support and Lee Major's insight into Austin's struggles add depth to the narrative. Meanwhile, the Israeli adaptation of the title reflects cultural sensitivities. Sandra Bullock gained prominence portraying Kate Mason, a protege of the titular character, and Jamie Somers. She was known as the bionic girl in the series. Lindsay Wagner, who played Jamie Somers, bore a scar on her upper lip resulting from a car accident in 1976. Lee Majors, who portrayed the lead character, performed about 90% of his own stunts. 